we have seen the presentation and many people including our scientists have spoken from the speech or intervention made and from the presentation given we have seen that there is no doubt there is going to be flooding in South Sudan but the only question we need to ask ourselves is how big or how bad is it going to be and what and what can we do now before it comes i think those those are the only challenging questions that we need to ask ourselves in our communication with the government of uganda as it was alluded to in part of the report presented and in our communication with egad climate predictions and application center we were told that the water level of Lake Victoria has gone up to 13.6 meters high. According to them, this increase has been one of the highest ever recorded in history of flooding in 128 years in the Nile Basin region. And due to this high water level rise, the amounts of water that is coming in to ginger dams in Uganda is overwhelming. And because of that, as it was said before, the retention capacity of ginger dam is reduced, I mean, is overwhelmed too much and the government of Uganda is forced to release that massive amounts of water which is 2,600 cubic meters per second downstream into South Sudan. Rainfall forecast according to Egad Climate Prediction and Application Center it's going to be wetter in South Sudan than it was last year. And therefore, if we are going to have these massive amounts of water coming into South Sudan and medical rain, then there is no doubt that what we are going to encounter is going to be a real disaster. We will have too much displacement it's obvious it's going to come. And then according to the reports of humanitarian community, a population of five million people is said to be at risk of famine and starvation as we speak. And with this upcoming flooding, I'm sure that the situation will worsen than it is now. Boreholes, schools, and health centers will be submerged. There will be disruptions in road transport and air transport, as it was the case in 2020, 2022, 2021. So the question is, as I said, is what do we need to do now? I think what we need to do is what we are doing, that the government has to engage in early warning and early action. It is believed that one dollar invested in early warning, early action can save you ten dollars. As Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation I think you have seen the letter that we have written and sent out. We are very much committed to ensuring that the risk is mitigated. In the course of doing this, we have now intensified our communication with the government of Uganda on the release regime from the dam. We communicate 
with the Minister of Uganda on a daily basis. And we believe that knowing the daily release from the dam is also very important because it can be used as a precaution measure for those that are in flood prone uh, uh, areas. We have also intensified our monitoring capacity about water level, weather, and timely dissemination of, uh, of, of information. I actually support the idea that what needs to be done has to be done collaboratively. It's, it's not the responsibility of the Minister of Water Resources to put you know, the, the, the resources together and then try to uh, convince everyone that I am the lead and we want everyone to come uh, and, and follow. It's a common responsibility. It's, it's a responsibility we share. And from this time onward, uh, we will be working with you, the development partners, we will be working with the foreign governments, we will be working with line ministries responsible for mobilization and to ensure that at least something is done uh, before uh, the occurrence of this flooding. This are, these are a few of the comments that, uh, few of the, of, of the comments that I would like to share. And almost to the closing point, um, I would like to give some explanation, let me say clarifications about questions asked by some of the speakers who spoke, uh, who have asked a question, especially um, there was a question that uh, one, of, uh, one of the person who asked the question was saying that he read one of the reports and in that report, he, he saw an allocation of water of the Nile, uh, probably among Egypt, uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, but he has not seen an allocation of this water to us. And I said before that this question is a policy question and it cannot be answered by the technical committee. I will be short in, in giving you the precise and correct answer of this. First, the 1959 agreement is between Sudan and Egypt on one hand and Ethiopia on another hand. And the agreement is on the Blue Nile. South Sudan, as we have come out from Sudan, is not a part of Blue Nile. We are not a part of Blue Nile. And not only this, if there is also a need for us to discuss the 1959 agreement, uh, South Sudan um, cannot make its common uh, on this uh, 1959 agreement at this time. By the time the issue will be, bring, will be brought to the table for discussion, uh, this is where the government of South Sudan uh, will actually uh, give a position. But now, we're not part of the Blue Nile Agreement. Uh, this is what I want to say is about 1959 agreement. The other question was about water bill. We have got our water bill in a drop. And when I came to the office, one of the things I had wanted to do, and I actually want it to be done, is to make sure that this water bill is made and passed by the parliament. I have formed uh, a team of experts to go through the drafted one and visit the rest of the neighboring countries, the countries, I mean, the neighboring countries around us, so that they have look, so that they, they, they have to look at the water bill of those countries to inform the, 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 the making process of our own bill. So I, I, I would like to say that this is in the process 
but it requires resources. And we have committed uh, very much to making sure that the water bill uh, will be out very soon. We have requested UNICEF, and it is in, 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 in the discussion uh, in, 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 in UNICEF uh, that uh, this uh, uh, water bill making process will be uh, supported financially. Yes, the upcoming flooding is going to affect oil field. It has already affected. So what is the Minister of Water Resources doing with the Minister of Petroleum? It's also a good question, and I think it was partially answered by those who, by the technical committee who spoke. Um, when oil fields in 2020, in, in 2019, 2021, were flooded, I think the Minister of Petroleum and the government became very much concerned. And as a result of that, the government commit to carrying out feasibility studies. And in doing that feasibility studies, the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation became part of the feasibility studies. However, uh, there is no report of what progress the feasibility study has gone. But on our part, we went to NBI, to the Nile Basin Initiative. We have asked them for support. And generously, the Nile Basin has responded by funding a project called Nile, Eastern Nile Cooperation Projects, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. So this project has feasibility, uh, feasibility study aspect that will inform the decision of what needs to be done to make sure that oil field is protected from flooding. Uh, I think uh, with the question posed, I, I don't need to go further. I can stop here. And lastly, I, I, I thank the uh, Under Secretary of the Minister of Water Resources, uh, Honorable Peter Mal. Uh, for working day and night to make sure that we have got uh, this website that we we're going to uh, to launch uh, shortly. For any one of you who want to know more about us, more about our funding opportunities, more about our projects and daily activities, please we are available on the website. And at this stage, I would like to say that the official website of the Ministry of Water Resource is officially launched. Thank you.